Digging up dinosaurs by a licky. Have you ever seen dinosaur skeletons in a museum? I have. I visit them all the time. I went again yesterday. I saw an apatosaurus. I saw a corinthosaurus. I saw a guanodon and triceratops. I like to say their names. Stegosaurus was just where I had left it, and Tyrannosaurus rex looks as fierce as ever. Tyrannosaurus used to scare me. I still can't believe how big it is. Just its head is almost twice my size. I'm not afraid of dinosaurs anymore. Sometimes I call them you bag of bones under my breath. I can spend hours look at, looking at them. I used to wonder where they came from and how they got into the museum, but now I know. Dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. A few of them were as small as birds, but most were enormous. Some dinosaurs ate plants. Some dinosaurs ate the meat of other dinosaurs. And some may have even eaten the eggs of other dinosaurs. Dinosaurs lived everywhere. They lived on every continent in the world. They lived in Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Europe, Australia, and Antarctica. Then they died out. No one knows for sure when, why they became extinct, but they did. There hasn't been a dinosaur around for 65 million years. Until about 200 years ago, no one knew anything about dinosaurs. Then people began finding things in rocks. They found large footprints. They found huge, mysterious bones and strange teeth. People were finding fossils. Fossils are a kind of diary of the past. They are the remains of plants and animals that died long ago. Instead of rotting or crumbling away, the remains were preserved and slowly turned to stone. 80 million years ago, dinosaur dies and sinks into river. Its flesh rots. Its skeleton is covered by sand. In time, the sand and skeleton turn to stone. The dinosaur is hidden for millions of years. The earth changes. Some of the stone breaks away. Part of the dinosaur shows. Fossils tell about life on earth long ago. Everything we know about dinosaurs comes from studying fossils. Fossil hunters found more and more big bones, in different parts of the world, scientists studied the fossils. They said the bones and teeth and footprints all belonged to a group of giant reptiles that lived on Earth millions of years ago. The giants were named Dinosauria, or Terrible Lizard. In 1822, Marianne Mantell found the first dinosaur fossils in England. She discovered some giant fossil teeth. In 1825, her husband, Gideon Mantell, named the animal Iguanodon, or Iguanatooth. Nine years later, he found an Iguanodon skeleton. 1841, Richard Owen named the dinosaur reptiles Dinosauria. What finds these were? People crowded into museums to see them. But the dinosaur bones didn't just get up and walk there. They had to be dug out of the ground, slowly and patiently. Even today, digging up dinosaurs is not an easy job. A team of experts must work together. Paleontologists, a scientist who studies ancient plants and animals. Geologist, a scientist who knows the age of rocks and fossils. Draftsman, who draws fossils from draws pictures from the fossils. Workers, who dig the fossil out of the rock. Photographer, who takes pictures of the find. Specialists, who prepare the fossil for the museum. This is how fossil hunters work. First, they have to find a dinosaur. They search along riverbanks and in quarries. They climb up high cliffs and down into steep canyons. With luck, someone spots a fossil bone poking through the rock. The site is covered with a tent and the work begins. Sometimes a fossil is buried so deep the rock around it has to be drilled or blasted. Tons of rubber, rubble are carted away. Scientists chip at the rock close to the fossil. They brush away the grit. They have to be very careful. As soon as a bone is uncovered, it is brushed with shellac. The shellac helps hold the bone together so it won't crumble. Then the bone is numbered. Sometimes a skeleton has to be cut apart so that it can be moved. The draftsman draws each bone in its exact position and the photographer takes pictures. That way there can be no mix-up later when, the someone, when someone tries to put the skeleton together. When the bones are ready to be moved, they are carefully wrapped. Small bones are wrapped in tissue paper and put into boxes or sacks. Large bones are left half buried in rock. They will be dug out later in the museum. These fossils are covered with a plaster cast just as the broken leg is. The cast protects the bone. It's amazing how fragile even the big bones are. First, the parts of the fossils that show are covered with the wet tissue paper and then with strips of burlap dripped in wet plaster. Then the whole piece is wrapped in the same way. When the plaster dries, it becomes very hard. The tissue paper covering makes the cast easier to remove later. Each bone is then packed in straw and put in crates and taken to the museum. Unpacking all these bones in the museum laboratory will be a job, too. We're lucky there is a road this time. 
At the museum, scientists unwrap the fossil. They finish digging it out of the rock. They study the bones. This rock is 115 million years old. That means the dinosaur is too. I can tell from these many flat teeth that this was a plant eater. Scientists dig out the fossil in many different ways. They use a hammer and chisel, fine needles, power tools like a dentist drill, special sandblasting machines, or even chemicals that dissolve the rocks but do not harm the fossils. They compare the bones to other dinosaur bones. They compare them to the bones of other animals. They try to figure out what size and shape the dinosaur was. They try to find out how the dinosaur stood and walked and what it ate. If there are enough bones, scientists are able to complete a complete skeleton. A frame is made in the shape of the dinosaur to support the bones. The bones are wired together one by one. They are held in place with special pieces of metal. If any bones are missing, plastic or fiberglass ones are made to replace them. You can hardly tell the new bones from the old. After many months, the work is complete. The dinosaur skeleton looks just as, once, just as it once did. Until recently, only a few museums had dinosaurs. Then scientists learned to make copies of the skeletons. The copy is hard to make. It takes a long time. The original skeleton has to be taken completely apart, bone by bone. A mold is made for each of the bones. The new pieces are made of fiberglass. A fiberglass dinosaur is just as scary as the original, but much stronger and lighter. Now all museums all over the world have dinosaur skeletons, and many people can spend hours looking at them the way that I do. The end.